Hey everybody, Marcos Viegas here in Oxnard, California for Fight Up TV, being joined with UFC champion TJ Dillashaw. We are at the Vasily Lomachenko training day and a uh, partner that uh, you know very well, uh, uh, a guy that you've shared the ring with, you've mm. trained, you've sparred, and he's preparing for this big matchup, Jorge Linares. Mm. Uh, it's a fight that many feel that it will be competitive and we'll see the best of both fighters. But during this time, how have you seen Lomachenko and what has he told you about this fight? Man, I think he's untouchable. You know, I think everyone always says his, his next fight's like, oh, he's going to maybe get pushed. He's going to get challenged this time. And then he goes out time and time and proves that uh, he makes him quit. He's too much for him. You know, I think the same thing's going to happen. He's too fast. He's too elusive. His cardio is insane. I mean, I think it's going to be the same story. What amazes you about him? Like, what does he do in there that you kind of think like, damn, like, how is this guy able to do this? Just how relaxed he is. Um, he sees every punch coming at him. Um, when I got to spar with him, it was, uh, I felt like he knew what I was going to throw before I even threw it, you know? So he's just ahead of the game. And uh, some of that stuff I don't think you can train. It's something you're just gifted with, you know? Like, he's able to see things in slow motion. All the greats, you know, the Michael Jordans, the, the guys like Lomachenko, they're able to see these things in slow motion and, and take advantage of it. And that's why he's getting guys to quit, you know? Like, he's not there when they want to hit him. He's on him when they don't want him to be on him. Um, his work, work ethic is amazing. Um, very kind guy to let me come in here and, and be able to get some work and pick their brain and uh, to learn from the best. Like when you're, you know, I saw the clip of you sparring against him. Like when you're there and, and when you talk to him after, like, did you ask him, like, okay, how'd you set me up here? Like, what is it exactly when he enters that mode and he's making people miss and, and made uh, them, I don't know, he makes people look foolish and they're in the ring. I mean, really just comes down to learning from experience, you know? I mean, it's kind of hard to pick his brain on things. There's the language barrier as well as, uh, you know, this is only my second time at the gym. It's not like I've been here constantly. Yeah. So it's like one of those things that hopefully we can continue to build that relationship where I'll, I will get on that page. But really, it's just kind of seeing what he does in his fights as well as how he's training it and just play the copycat game, you know what I mean? Kind of understand why he's doing things and, and, and do them yourself, you know? Add that to your, your game, a new wrinkle to my game. When you sparred him and you were looking across at him, were you thinking like, oh shit, like, okay, <laughs> like it's Lomachenko right across the ring for me? Yeah, man, of course. I mean, I, I was actually nervous to come and spar, you know? Yeah. I feel like it was like fight day almost, yeah. you know? Like you got the anxiety of uh, just wanting to like prove yourself, you know, that like you're worthy enough to be here and to be in the, the ring with him. And uh, yeah, man, he, he's the great. I mean, you know, when, when you're when you're that kind of fighter and I'm, I'm the best in my weight class, I'm the best in the UFC, like, I still want to be, I still want to have that feeling. I still want to have that respect and that feeling of I'm in there with the great, you know? What do you feel is kind of rubbed off on you from him? Or have you been able to take anything from being able to share the ring with him into uh, your fight that you had with Cody or into this rematch as well? You know, I'm a, I'm a, a very elusive fighter myself. I love to uh, use my footwork. I change my stance. I do a lot of those things. So there's things that I can just kind of pick up on, visualize, and, and how relaxed he kind of stays and, and uh continue to put that into my game, you know, making sure not, not everything's in a hurry, you know, kind of use your patience and see the openings. Um, not every punch has to be hard. You see Lomachenko kind of put his hands on you, make you cover up and then really choose that hard shot. Things like that, you know, I mean, there's there's a lot of greats I take technique from. He's one of them, you know, you watch Terrence Crawford, you know, some of these guys that are, have the kind of styles that I like to, to use myself and, and add what they do to, to make my style even better. I, I could see that meshing because, like you mentioned, a uh, big part of your game is your movement. You're yeah. very unpredictable. You, we think you're going one way, yeah. and you use lateral movement, and you're, you, you go the other way, and you throw a punch. Yeah. And a lot of times you do catch people um, with those punches. Going back to the first fight uh, that you had with Cody, mm -hmm. uh, now that there's been so much time mm -hmm. uh, since then, what do you remember most about the fight? I try not to remember anything. I try to shut my brain off, really. You know, I mean, when I'm out there, I don't, I don't want to think. I, I want to react. You know, I want to be a reactive fighter while I'm out there. I don't want to have, like, I have a game plan going in there, and, but that's something that I train for the 12 weeks I'm in camp or however long my camp may be that I instill those, those, that game plan into me so I don't have to think about it, you know. When I get out there, I shut my brain off. I react, and uh, great things happen. I'm always – when I'm at my best, I'm having fun and I'm not thinking. If I'm out there and I'm angry trying to knock you out and, and have this plan in my head, I'm too slow. You know, that, that opportunity you saw, if you're thinking about it, has already passed you up. You have to be able to react to it when it's there and not even think about it. You got to think then, with that being said, that maybe that might have played on his end because of the, the pass that he just wanted to load up and, and catch you with... With punches? I think, I think with a lot of fighters. I think it's a it's a hard thing to actually be able to hone into. I mean, I think it took me a long time to even figure that out, you know? I mean, to to not think, to 
just react, you know, to because I mean, there's a lot of nerves that go into fighting. I mean, I think fighting's you know 70, 80 percent mental. I mean, everyone's all of us are great athletes, but uh, being able to have that mental edge, that reaction time to be in there uh, and just be clear minded is, is it's a tough thing, you know, with all the pressure, all the lights, all the people, it's something that's hard to control. We hear that so much that this game is, is so mental, combat sports so mental. And, and you kind of touched a little bit on it, but when you're in there, what does it really mean um, when you're saying that is, is it just keeping out thoughts or si trying to stay clear like in there? Like what, what is it really when fighters say that? Enjoy the process, you know, all this hard work I'm putting in right now. I mean, I'm not even in camp and I'm putting in hard work, you know. Um, all this hard work I'm putting in, I need to enjoy it while I'm out there. You know, don't let this life pass me by with being so nervous and uh, not enjoying the process, you know. Yeah, I could see um, that kind of eating up somebody, like the thinking and they're going through scenarios and like, what if he do, does this, what if he does that. It make you hate your job, yeah. you know. I mean, all that stress, all that bull crap, it make, it'd make you hate your job. But, you know, I, I'm out there, I got a smile on my face and I'm having fun. So let us know what, what happens in this rematch. Uh, is there going to be anything different to, in camp in the build up to it? And, and what do you really expect from it? always going to be different you know you can't even we have a game plan going into fight things may change you know i see myself finishing cody in the first round so the second this time there's some openings i i've seen um i've already known they were there you know things that i uh should have taken advantage of sooner that i can but that's the great thing about it is that i can finish them anywhere you know i can finish them on the ground i'm a better wrestler i'm a better jiu-jitsu fighter I'm, be I'm better on my feet you know so the point is is just to uh control it have some fun and, and look for that finish do you think his approach will be different in terms of him being a little bit more patient, or do you still expect him to come forward and try to pressure you and cut off your angles? You know, I mean, I think if he tries to change too much, it might hinder him. We'll see. Um, but if he tries to come out to be the same fighter, too, I know what's open. So I think either way, it's going to be looking pretty for me. What do you make about the, the comments that he's thrown out there in the media? And uh, they've, they've gotten headlines, but what do you make of all that? It's just it's just a way to try to get into my skin. You know, he wants me. They tried the whole last camp too, um, which is something I've had to learn throughout my career is uh, controlled aggression. You know, because they know me. I, I've trained with him a lot. You know, so they, he wants to get me pissed off. He wants to get me aggressive. He wants me to come after him. You know, he wants that. He wants that. If I fight angry, I'm not going to be cool, calm, and collected and see the openings. And so just trying to get under my skin to do that whole thing, but uh, it's not working. You know, It's something you just got to brush it off and not deal with the politics of this game. And like I said, just enjoy the process. Your time over there, I know you built a, a lot of relationships mm -hmm. with a lot of the guys there. Uh, do you ever look back and you just think of the whole situation like, man, like I wish it wouldn't have turned out this way? And oh, always. Yeah, man. I w it's childish. You know, I mean... It's it's very especially for the way it's gone down and for the drama that is created. It, it's it's pretty stupid, but I mean, it sells tickets. <laughs> you know, it, <laughs> it builds interest. That's for sure. But but you guys were were a unit. You know, you guys were homies, close homies. Yeah, not with not with Cody so much. He was kind of on his way in. I was on my way out. But there's still guys I have great relationships with. Guys I talk with on a daily basis. You know, but there's some guys that have crossed the line that I won't ever forgive. You know, guys that have tried to like slander my name in the media and create those headlines that I feel like it's gone a little above and beyond, and uh, I'll never forgive them for it. But I have great relationships still with the guys that understand what I've done and why I've done it have wanted to join me and uh, it's uh, a lot more truth will continue to come out. All right, TJ, hey man, thank you so much, really appreciate it. I look forward uh, to the fight, but uh, look forward to see you in training camp as yeah. well here. TJ Dillashaw rematching Cody Garbrandt coming up at the Staples Center August 4th in Los Angeles.